Hello, everybody. It's Paul Neese with the Real Life Health Show. It is Thursday, and I'm going to do my Q&A on Friday for my members of the Real Life Health Show. But today I'm going to do Q&A from yesterday's video because yesterday I made a video about how much food do we really need to eat. And we had a couple of responses to that. So I'm going to answer some of those questions here. But tomorrow on the Real Life Health Show for members only, I'm going to be answering all the questions I got all week about every single topic. So if you're not a member yet, go check that out, reallifehealthshow.com. Now yesterday's video was about how much food do we really need and are we overeating or not. And I had uh, some comments and questions. Uh, the response was taken very well to the video, which is a good thing. But uh, one of the comments somebody asked me is, uh, thanks for sharing your knowledge. But the, my question is, what is the difference between eating less and anorexia? Is there any symptoms to be aware of if one is eating too little? Well, they're kind of two different questions. Anorexia and other eating disorders are emotional disorders that can affect us physically if they're not taken care of. And there are definitely signs uh, that shows when somebody has an eating disorder. Uh, but signs of somebody eating too little uh, can be part of those signs. But that doesn't necessarily mean if somebody's not eating enough that they have anorexia. So uh, there, there are two different things here we got to keep remember. Now, whenever somebody is going on any type of diet, whether they're adding more food or less food or switching around the food they're eating, uh, we have to look at the reason of why we're doing it. And if it is because uh, we're not happy with the way we look, well, if you're really, truly out of shape, that's a good thing. It's okay to want to eat better, to look better and feel better. But if we take it to such an extreme where we're trying to look like the perfection of some airbrushed model in a magazine or to maintain a weight of some uh, even a big muscle bodybuilder versus uh, even a, 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 for women a model then it becomes a, another thing other than I just want to be healthy and it's no longer a health thing I'm very careful to tell people not to go on a hundred percent raw food diet because believe it or not many men and women but mostly women that I meet that are on a raw food diet and I'm not saying all of you out there I know some of you are very healthy and you're doing it in a very wise way but I've met many many women over the years and I don't want to sound like an, an, a really high amount but more than the average who got into a raw food diet and had some form of an eating disorder now in reality we all have an eating disorder especially if we're we care so much about how we eat that it's controlling our lives uh, but sometimes that could be good, but usually it's not too good. If you have a tough time with self-control, if you have a tough time with with taking things to the extreme so far where it can damage your health, uh, especially if you care more about the way you look than the way you feel, or you care more about your looks than your health, well then it, it really needs to, you really need to be careful with this. Uh, but the fact is, most people just eat too much, and pretty much all of us can eat less and I don't want to say all of us because if somebody's already struggling with anorexia or other eating disorders well you know, they are probably not eating too much you're not getting enough at least because maybe they're eating enough but vomiting it up or something like that but there is a difference between cleansing and starvation is basically what I'm trying to say and how could you tell that difference well uh, cleansing is a natural thing that's healthy for the body uh, eating less or going on even what we call a calorie restrictive diet is good for long-term health Whereas starving ourselves is not giving the cells what they need to thrive, and that's not a good thing, and that's not healthy. How do we know if we're eating too much or too little? Well, there's different ways to tell, but certainly our energy levels will have something to do with it. But that can be quite confusing because if a person's fasting, and they're not used to fasting, the first couple of days they'll be very weak. But you'd be surprised into a fast how much energy you'll have the third, fourth, fifth day, and so on. However, uh, you know, somebody could have a lot of energy from stimulation or stimulants. So energy is not the final tell-all tale if we're getting what we need or if we're getting enough. Uh, but usually if we don't have energy, it, it, it leads us to believe that we're, we might not be getting enough. Yes, we could be detoxifying, but if we're eating a lot and we still don't have energy, chances are we're just not getting good calories, we're not getting good nutrition. And really doesn't matter how much food we eat as long as we meet our body's requirements for the nutrition that it needs. And usually a lot of people have to eat a lot of food to meet those nutrients because the food they're eating is so low quality. Now when you're eating better quality food and your body is already cleansed out, 
you can get by on so much less. Now let me stress that when your body is already cleansed out. Because if you start eating higher quality food uh, and your body starts detoxifying, but you're not already cleansed out, that detox is going to create or use up a lot of energy. Uh, but when your body is already clean, you're not going to have such a severe detoxification. And also, your body is going to be able to do more with less. And that's what the video is about, doing more with less. I don't want to see anyone going to extremes out there. I'm not promoting or talking about long-term fast or long-term fasting. When I tell people to eat less, you know, if you're eating like the average person, the average person that eats 10 to 15 times a day with their snacking and their picking and their grazing and everything else, there's no little man in the stomach that says, here comes a meal or here comes a snack. Anytime you eat, your body has to work. And without a doubt, we can go on two meals a day if they're nutritious meals. If you want to do three meals a day, do three meals a day. You know, I always recommend people count their meals instead of naming their meals. You know, where names come from to begin with? Uh, well, I did some research on that in my book, The Daylight Diet, but it's quite interesting. But th for, for a long time, there were only two meals a day. There was breakfast, and then there was dinner, and dinner was served in, at noontime. That was it. People didn't eat late at night. If they did, they ate something, a very light meal, and they called it supper. Now, I used to think dinner and supper was the same thing, but it's not. You know, dinner is a big meal, means to dine in the middle of the day. Supper is a very small meal that people ate before the sun came down because they didn't want to go to sleep on an empty, on a, on a heavy stomach. Today it's almost backwards. People think they can't go to sleep unless they're on a heavy stomach. Uh, but all in all, we want to make sure that two times, three times at most, if you want to do one meal a day and, and you feel okay doing that, that's great. Now, it also depends on the type of energy we're using each day. You know, some people, I laugh when I say, well, I work a very uh, strenuous job or a very outgoing job or I exercise a lot so I need more calories. Well, if your body is not cleansing or cleansed, that might be true. But once you cleanse, as I said, your body can do less with more. And you'll be surprised how much work you can do, even heavy work or endurance work, on a very little amount of food. You'd be very surprised. You know, now in the long term, is that good? In the long term, we want to make sure uh, we're getting in at least enough the amount of calories that we're expanding. But in the short run, uh, you know, you don't need to do this and overeat just because you're doing too much. An example I always give is extreme sports. If you're training to run a marathon for once in your life and that's a goal that you want to accomplish, wonderful. But if you make a lifestyle out of living, running marathons, you know, that might not be too healthy for the body because you're going to have to eat a diet and eat an amount of food. That, that keeps along up with that and that's just too much wear and tear on the body all around so I don't recommend extreme sports I recommend setting goals and achieving them and I do recommend sports and exercise uh, every day but realistically folks if we looked at how much we were eating uh, the people that eat a lot of calories they're not eating good quality calories uh, if we are eating good quality calories we won't need as much if our body's clean we'll be able to get the nutrients from the food uh, so that's basically that. Now, somebody asked me a question about calories. They say, uh, if you are eating calorie, a calorie-restricted diet, should it be more or less than 25%? Well, the person that wrote this question really didn't say 25% of what. So uh, you'll have to re rephrase the question there, Mr. Enrique. Uh, you know, 25% of what? Uh, but the other questions were, how many calories are needed for the average sedentary man or, or the average active man. Well, there is no average because there's so many different people that do so many different things in such a various way. But I know on calorie restricted diets, people have been able to thrive on 1,200 calories a day. Uh, and, and that was, according to the study, the average person, uh, they were able to thrive on 1,200 calories a day. Now, I know 1,500 calories a day or even 2,000 calories a day. Now, I'm not one to count calories. And I don't like to or enjoy counting calories, and I do not think it's necessary. I think if we're not meeting our body's needs, nutrition and calorie-wise, our body will respond and will tell us. But if you are one out there that does want to count calories, if you can fit 1,500 calories into your diet on a daily basis, and it's coming from good quality food, you know, you should be able to get all you need in your diet. Now, if you're doing some extreme sports for a short amount of time, and you want to get 2,000 calories, that's fine. Uh, but there are people like... Uh, you know, the, the, the guy, the, the, the swimmer, the Olympic swimmer, whatever his name was, he was eating 14,000 calories a day. Now, this guy won eight gold medals uh, in, in one Olympics, and 
looked like he was in great condition, and I'm sure he felt wonderful. But that was during his Olympic training, and it's been proven all throughout professional sports. Uh, people, when they're, they're so involved in their sports and eating this way, uh, two things they find out later in life. One of them is when they stop doing those sports to that level, if they keep eating that way, it's right away they put on weight and all the diseases and problems that go along with putting on weight. Uh, but the other thing is, if they uh, keep eating that way, the body just can't handle it. It's just too much work. And they don't have enough time to get the proper amount of rest to recuperate uh, from all the work that the body has to do. And all of these people don't live very long. Uh, most people in the world that ever ate a high calorie diet didn't live a very long time without getting disease later in life. Uh, the studies have proven that people on a lower calorie diet uh, live the longest. And, and, or the average calorie diet and, you know, and doing average exercise is fine. You know, on the topic of exercise, I'll just briefly say people usually exercise too much or too little. Very few people exercise the right amount. We can talk about that enough time. Uh, but how many calories is needed for the active person? Well, it's, it is different for everyone because we're all under different circumstances. But I would say between the 1,500 and 2,000 calorie range, if you're getting good quality nutrients, is definitely fine for the average person. Now, I know some people say, well, it'll be hard to do on a raw food diet. <laughs> no, it won't. Uh, if you're eating uh, just something all day that doesn't have a lot of calories in it, it might be. But if you're eating a lot of good uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, if you're eating a lot of uh, fruits that have sugar in them or fruits that have fat in them, uh, you can certainly meet those uh, caloric needs. Uh, I'm not for counting calories again, but uh, again, if you are, <laughs> I know some people that that as a goal, they try to eat three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand calories a day, and you might be one of them, and you might email me and say you feel great doing that. Well, how we feel doesn't always determine on what's going on in our body and if we're healthy or not. But if you feel fine doing that and you think it's okay for you, well, I'm not here to convince you or anyone else to change. I'm just telling you that most people overeat, and we can mostly get by on a lot less if we're eating good quality nutrients, and in the long run, be much better for it. Uh, another question somebody gave me about this topic was, how come people in the raw food movement always avoid the calories issues? Well, that's not necessarily true. There are a lot of people that count calories in the raw food movement. And again, all calories are not the same. So to count numbers of a calorie is really doesn't make sense because somebody could be getting a thousand calories of one thing versus a, cal a thousand calories of something else that's not necessarily healthy for them. So there's empty calories versus uh, full calories, and there's a big difference with this. And I think the reason people avoid this is because since there's such a differentiation of what a calorie truly can be for the body is, it doesn't really make a difference if you're counting calories or not. And as for myself, for the last 10, 15 years or so, you know, I, I, let me put it this way. Before I ate this way, I used to eat between seven to 8,000 calories a day, over 300 grams of animal protein, and none of it came from produce because I hated the taste of fruits and vegetables. Now, on the average day, I might eat about 1,500 calories, and, and that is with taking some days off from not even eating at all, just doing juice. But on the average day, 1,500 calories a day, and it's good quality calories from a raw food diet. I personally feel great at this. I know others might have different experiences, uh, so we all have to do what works best for us. Uh, somebody said, uh, another question we have here is, well, I'll answer these other questions here on tomorrow's Q&A for the Raw Life Health Show. And on the Raw Life Health Show, again, for members of the Raw Life Health Show, if you'd like my answer session just now, or you have comments on about this, or you want the discussion to keep going, every Friday on the Raw Life Health Show, I answer everyone's questions from the previous week's videos and other questions I get, various questions. And also every Monday, we have the featured guest video, and we have a great featured guest coming up this week on the Raw Life Health Show coming up Monday. So everybody, check that out tomorrow, but I hope I answered uh, your questions to this uh, previous video about how much do we really need, and thanks for joining us, and post your comments or questions below the video, and until then, have a great day and a great raw life. Nature's wealth, good for your health, this is the Raw Life Health Show, Raw Life, brighten up your life.